guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my full coverage flawless face or how to get a flawless face video for you guys. Now I filmed a video very, very similar to this about a year ago, but things have definitely changed since then. My skin's changed slightly and my kind of wants out of my foundation have changed a little bit as well. So I have definitely been experimenting with some new products, just trialing and testing really. And I have come to a regime that I am very, very happy with. So I thought that I'd share with you that today. I'm gonna first take the MAC Strobe Cream. I love this stuff. It's really, really pretty um, on the skin. It does have a little bit of luminosity to the skin, which is gorgeous. So I just apply a little bit to my face. For me personally, I do prefer more of a glowy, flawless look opposed to a matte look. That's why I like using a kind of strobing cream underneath my foundation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that sink into my skin for a minute or two, just so it has time to absorb and become a little bit more tacky, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've given the strobe cream about a minute to sink into the skin, I'm gonna be using that as my primer. If I didn't mention that before, I don't think I did. Sorry. Anyway, I'm gonna be taking my Benefit The Pore Professional. Um, any pore perfecting cream will work, and I'm just going to fill in my pores. I do like this one because it is not super silicone-y. It still has a bit of grip to it, um, so I have been reaching for this a lot recently. And I'm just applying that to where I have larger pores, so this is more in the center of my face. And also, when you're applying a pore corrector, or a pore filler, I should say, always press up against the pore so it actually gets into the pore, not just like slapped on randomly. At least that's what I find, you can do whatever you want. Now I do have a blemish right here, so I'm just gonna take a little bit more of the professional, just a tiny little bit. I'm just going to run it over the top. This is just going to make the texture a little bit less visible, I guess, if that's how I'd word it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, now moving on to foundation, I have been mixing two together. Um, and it is these two right here. This is the NARS All Day Luminous Foundation in the shade Stromboli. Stromboli. <laughs> and then this one is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation and I hit myself in the eyebrow. <laughs> anyway, um, this is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. I do have a first impressions of this one up on my channel. This is in the shade 123 or in their new numbering it is Y365. I mix these two together. This on its own gives quite medium coverage. This here is like literally like all pigment in my opinion. Um, but this isn't the right skin tone for me. I wish I could get this in my right shade but it's just so hard finding my right color match in NARS. Anyway, rant over. I'm just going to mix a little bit of each. I kind of adjust it depending on how dark I am fake tanned. So I'm going to start off with a pump of the Makeup Forever and then I'm just going to add in maybe about two little drops, three little drops of the NARS All Day Luminous. This foundation does oxidize though, the NARS one. So just bear that in mind if you are shopping for it. Now, I've tried so many different makeup tools. I've tried the oval brush dupes. I'm not gonna buy the real one because that's like expensive. Um, I've tried beauty blenders. I've tried real techniques, complexion sponges. But to be honest, my favorite way to blend in my foundation is just a normal flat top kabuki brush. This one's from Sigma. It doesn't need to be from Sigma. I like the ones from Real Techniques. I like the ones from Jessup but I just love flat top buffing brushes, especially if I want full coverage. So what I do is I start tapping on the skin just to kind of spread the product around. And then after that, I buff into the skin. And I always don't do underneath my eyes. I go in with a separate product underneath there. And I like this combination because it's not too heavy on the skin. Like it doesn't feel like a mask or anything like that. It's just very, comfortable feeling on the skin especially for the coverage you get like seriously look at the like look at my face on this side so again just patting and then buffing so that's one layer of the mixture on my face I really really like the coverage that it gives the good thing about these two foundations mixed together is you can definitely go in with a second layer if you really need to also just an overall foundation tip is make sure that you pull it a little bit down your neck or at least under your jaw, I should say. You don't need to pull it all the way down to like here or here. Just pull it down to your neck, like there. Not a lot, but just not so it just finishes on your jawline, if that makes any sense at all. Another thing that I forgot to mention about those two foundations is that they don't dry too quick. 
So that's another reason why I love those two foundations because some foundations you'll apply it to your face and like it'll be instantly dry. And it's like, what? I didn't have any time to even blend that out. Um, so that's another reason why I love those two foundations. Not to mention they both come with pumps, which I think is great. And for those who are cautious about how this photographs, I wore this to my cousin's engagement party where there was heaps of flash photography and all the photos that I saw of myself were perfect. I loved it so much and it lasted so ridiculously long. Okay, now that foundation is on, we're going to move on to concealer. I've been using a corrector before my concealer for the good part of like a year and a bit now. I'm just going to take a little bit of this corrector, but I don't think you guys can see how much pan I've hit. Like I'm literally scraping the edges. I love this stuff so much. Um, I do have a backup ready to be used though. And I'm just going to tap this underneath my eyes. This is going to counteract the purpley tones underneath the eyes. Um, and I just love this step so much. I won't go too in depth as to how I cover up my under eye dark circles just because I do want to do a video on it. Um, but I do use this as one of my main products. I love using this brush from Real Techniques. It's their contour brush. I use it for um, kind of just patting out my corrector. Now, I don't know if you guys can notice, but the darkness underneath my eyes has definitely decreased a lot. So that's why I love this product. So the concealer that I've been liking to use on top of that corrector has actually been the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Concealer in the shade One Awake. Um, so I'm gonna be using that today. I've been using it for the past month, I think, and I really, really enjoy it. It's just a pot concealer, and I'm just going to apply that underneath my eyes. This is a super, super light shade. Um, I probably could have went a darker shade, like a shade darker, but whatever. I just love how creamy it is. It's really, really pretty. Um, it's not the best concealer in the world, but it does do the trick. And I just kind of do like an upward triangle shape just to kind of lift the under eye area as well. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my forehead, a little bit down my nose, Cupid's bow, and chin. And then for some reason, I always drag it underneath my nose as well. And then I'm just gonna take the Real Techniques contour brush again. I'm gonna do my under eyes last just because I wanna powder that area straight away. Um, so I'm just gonna blend the other areas first. Not like straight away, but that's like where I wanna powder the first out of anywhere on my face. Now, because I can still notice a little bit of my blemish peeping through, I'm gonna be using my EX1 Delete Concealer. This is in the shade D100. And I'm just gonna grab that on my finger. I'm just gonna apply it. Okay, now to do the under eyes. I just love this brush for concealer because it just, it's so soft and it doesn't really pull at the eye, which I appreciate. If you have taken your concealer a little bit too far down, just go in with your foundation brush and kind of just pat over the line to like bring the foundation back up. And then sometimes I do go in with my finger just to make sure that everything is blended in. Sometimes I use a beauty blender, sometimes I use my finger. It really just depends on how I feel. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm just applying a little bit of MAC Paint Pot to my eyelids. This is my eyeshadow base. I do this every single day after I've done my under eye concealer because I set my under eye concealer and my soft ochre paint pot at the same time. So I thought I'll do it now, but you don't need to do it at all. Okay, a step that I do when I wanna be super, super glowy is eye cream or liquid illuminate. One that I love and I use this in my last video as well is the NARS Coco Cabana Illuminator. This stuff is bomb. It's definitely worth every single cent. It lasts ages. I'm just going to take a little bit on my brush. This one here is a tapered foundation brush from Real Techniques and I'm just going to dot that on my cheekbones. I do this before I powder just so it doesn't go all weird. And then I just blend this out with my finger as well. And then I do take it above my eyebrow. I love that stuff so much. Like, can you just see that glow? Whew, Lord. And you don't need much at all. Like, this is way too much, but that's as little as I can get onto my foundation brush, unfortunately. Um, but I just tap it. And I even go in a little bit just so that the center of my face is a little bit highlighted or glowy, I guess. Like, can you just see that glow? I love this stuff so much. Because my under eye dark circles are pretty bad today, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I don't do this every day, but the days when my under eye circles are really bad, I do feel like I need it. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit today and I've got some on the side of my nose. Oops. And I'm just gonna blend that out with the contour brush. 
Okay, to set the highlighted parts of my face, I'm going to be using this powder. It's from Maybelline. I've only recently started using it. Um, it does the job. It's not be-all, end-all, but it is alright. Um, this is the Matte Maker in the shade Classic Ivory. It's been in my collection for ages, and I just haven't been using it. And I've hit pan on basically all my other light powders, so I was like, it's time to use this one. Um, so what I do is I make sure that I have no under-eye creasing, and then I just pat this underneath my eye. And then I do it on my eyelids as well. You could use a concealer as an eyeshadow base, but for me it doesn't work. Like because I've quite um, inset eye, not inset eyes, but like my fold goes really, really deep. Um, I feel like I really do need an eyeshadow base to stay on all day. And this is just a fake Real Techniques brush that I bought off eBay for a few dollars. It does the job. It's quite nice. I really, really like it. I don't think I've blended in the concealer on my upper lip. Embarrassing. Okay, so to set the rest of my face, I'm going to use my favorite powder of all time. This is the Bourjois Healthy Balance Press Powder. I use the shade 53. I also own 55, which is really good as well. Um, but it just, it's a good night. It's just a really, really nice setting powder. So I just take a little bit on another one of those Real Technique fake eBay brushes. And I'm just going to set everywhere that I didn't use the light powder. I find that even if you do have dry skin, you should be using a powder just to set your foundation especially if you want to wear bronzer and stuff like powder bronzer because it just gives a nice kind of base where it doesn't stick to your foundation and it does glide on and blend effortlessly so underneath my eyes it does look a little bit light so I'm gonna be taking my normal face powder I'm just gonna dust it underneath my eyes just to kind of dull down the lightness a little bit okay so final step this I definitely do not do every single time that I do full coverage makeup um, but I do do it sometimes and it's where I use my models prefer mineral powder soft touch in the shade soft focus this is it here it's a very very similar product to say the hourglass ambient lighting powders and stuff like that um, I just take a tiny little bit and I tap off any excess and then I just kind of dust it over the high points of my face where I've highlighted um, not highlighted as in with my liquid highlight also can we just take a minute to like appreciate how gorgeous it is even though I've powdered Whew. anyway I just apply that like down my nose over my chin over my lip I kind of just sweep it there and it kind of just finishes off the makeup so well um, but anyway that's just another Thing that I do sometimes but anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the rest of my face makeup now and then I'll be right back okay guys so I finished the rest of my makeup this is what my face looks like once I've applied everything to my face um, I personally love doing a full coverage foundation look especially when I'm doing like a bold lip um, just because if I feel I feel like if I don't have a full coverage the dark lip will literally pull every imperfection out. That's why I love doing full coverage. I don't do a full coverage every single day, but the days that I do want a full coverage, I do do the process that I just showed you, and I'm really, really happy with it. It lasts a long time, and I feel like it photographs very, very well. So if you want a... Okay, guys, so I've just done the rest of my makeup, and I'm back now. Um, I love doing a full coverage foundation, especially when I'm going to be doing a bold lip. I feel like if you do a bold lip and you don't do a full full coverage foundation then literally every single imperfection on your face is drawn out that's why I love doing full coverage foundation when I plan on wearing a bold lip like the one that I have on today this one is abused by Jeffree Star I did film a chit chat kind of get ready with me video so subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss out on that but yeah this is what I do when I want to have a flawless face I don't always do this but the days that I do do it, I'm so happy with how my foundation wears and lasts and photographs. I'm so happy with it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me out so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye.